<clears throat> hey everyone, so today we're going to do a deck tech on a deck I have titled Karma's Cats. At the time of um, beginning this video, uh, but before the matches for this video, it's currently at about a 60% win rate. It's like 59.53 or something like that. Uh, but that's also out of like 40 or 50 games because I've been kind of fine-tuning it over the weekend. So it has a pretty good sample size and anything over 50% uh, is great for climbing the ladder, especially when it's that much over. A lot of decks for point of reference that are good for ladder climbs get like a 53 or 54% win rate. Uh, I will say the deck can be fairly hard to pilot, so mileage may vary, but at least for myself, now that I've kind of fine-tuned the deck as well as uh, have a little bit more experience in my matchups, I'm maintaining roughly the 60% win rate. So we're going to quickly break down kind of the idea of the deck. Um, it may look a bit weird to you because of uh, some of the numbers of cards, but I'll explain as we go. And um, <clears throat> this still may not be the best version. Um, it shifts on how you fine-tune this uh, when the meta shifts. But at least for now, while Viego is still extremely popular, this tends to function the best. If um, if Sivir decks start surging in popularity again, where you have a lot of Spell Shield, I think that some of these cards would change out for things that could pop Spell Shield for um, a lower investment. But even against the Sivir decks, I have an okay win rate right now, so I think that's fine. So anyway, let's get started. So. Uh, Fallen Fiend Line, this is technically our win condition in our deck. Uh, we can win without the Hexite Crystals, but it's a lot harder and a lot grindier. Uh, um, uh, ideally, you get the Hexite Crystal, and then you win the game um, with a Hexite Crystal. Um, and yes, I'm not saying you should sit on them. If you need them, you need them. Um, like I said, you can win the game without them. It just gets grindier. Um, we're playing two of Called Shots. Uh, this is one of the cards you may think is a bit stranger for us to be playing, uh, but we want our deck to cycle. Parallel Convergence is amazing when you have Karma on play, <laughs> and um, if you're unaware of how this works, Karma casts two copies, and then the, other, the second Karma comes out and then keeps copying, and it'll fill up your full board. So even if you have just a Karma, you'll make a full board of Karmas. Uh, if you don't, if you have more than Karma, it will be a little bit less good unless you want to copy your other things. Uh, but I have actually finished out games where I play that with a Scatter Pot and a Karma. I get um, all of my spell, spell mana refilled. I get three Karmas, three Scatter Pots, and my Scatter Pots are attacking with Elusive. And a lot of time that's lethal. Um, Scatter Pot, which we'll get to in a minute, is also a win condition, hypothetically. Three out of the Dragon. Um, honestly, if you're playing. If you're playing a Karma deck, you need to be playing Eye of the Dragon almost all of the time because Karma likes lots of spells, and Eye of the Dragon can always be played with Karma. There's no reason not to. I am playing uh, Mystic Shot as a two of. We wanted a little bit of burn, but we didn't want to overcommit to the package. Uh, one of Nopify. This is specifically because we were going into some matchups against Ezreal decks randomly. Um, I was just like, wow, Ezreal is actually still seeing play. And against Ezreal lists specifically, you really like to have Nopify. And um, we'll get more into why I'm playing a lot of weird one ofs. Playing three of Time Trick because this is also an Echo deck. Um, for people that say it's too inconsistent to play Echo outside of Shruma, I disagree. Um, I honestly thought it was going to be, and I thought it was going to be Mimi. Echo is a very consistent level for us. People aren't playing a lot of um, Burn at the moment unless they're playing the Ezreal list that I was just talking about. Um, Occasionally, you'll go up against like a Swain deck or something, but a lot of people they're playing like the really big removal to deal with Viegos, but not the burn spells because the burn spells aren't very good against Viego decks. Um, in addition to that, though, um, the deck just draws so many cards that a lot of the time I don't have a problem getting the Echo leveled. And honestly, getting the Echo down is just like chump blocker. Sometimes is all I care about. Um, chump block with him, draw a card with him. And uh, it gets us one of our predicts for when we hit Echo later in the game. But we don't actually need Echo to level to win. It's just a uh, an extra boon that's nice when it happens. Um, <clears throat> and arguably, we could cut the Echoes entirely. But I like having the backup win condition. And I haven't felt bad for playing it in the like 50 or 60 games I've played so far. 
But anyways, uh, two of twin disciplines. Uh, once again, we didn't want to overcommit to the, the package of protecting our units because we do want to be more um, reactive to answering their stuff. And this is in here because Fearsome can sometimes just bypass all of our uh, blockers for Eye of the Dragon. Or if we go up against a burn deck, we need to be able to protect our Eye of the Dragon kind of early. Uh, can be a good trick for Echo or Karma as well. Three practical perfectionists. So this is one of the reasons we're playing our deck in an interesting number of cards. It is not unusual for us to go up into a matchup and go, okay, I wish I had more Nopifies or Denies, or I wish I had more Wills or more Homecomings, and then you hit one of those things as Practical Perfectionist, and you shuffle them in. And if you don't hit a card that, that you want more of in your deck, you just click Skip, and you still got to shuffle your deck, uh, which is great for the, the Hexite Crystals, which is another reason we're playing as many predicts as possible. Yeah. Echo might not live, but if Echo gives us a predict, that's helping with the Fallen Feline, so it's great. <clears throat> I'm playing three of Concussive Palm. It's honestly one of our best defensive cards because if you play it pre if you pre-commit to this card, you get a blocker out of it. It helps with the fearsome package, which can be difficult, but luckily isn't an issue most of the time, because at the moment, uh, most decks that are playing Fearsome are playing VAO and then um, his his Venge Vine and those are both late enough that we normally are a little bit more stabilized by the time they come down. Um, one of deny similar to the Nopify, but this is for answering other people's counters. This is for being able to protect our karma, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Sometimes we shuffle more copies. Depends on the matchup. Um, we got two gotchas. This is just the rest of our burn package to round it out. In this deck, especially, gotcha can be more potent than the Mystic Shot because we can control when we draw it more often. Um, with the predictions and stuff and such. We have Homecoming as a two of and Will of Ionia as a two of. The reason we're playing Homecoming and Will both at two is we wanted the option of bouncing units if we don't have our own unit to do it to, as well as being able to bounce landmarks if necessary. Um, but Recall is really good in this format because it buys you a lot of time against Viego, um, especially because you can if you wait and time it right, you can stop Viego from leveling uh, and ruin a whole lot of progress. And some Viego decks commit really hard to that level. Um, and if you can stop it from going off, it can win you a game. Uh, but this will also save you from a lot of the more dangerous units in play, um, at least for a round. Um, notably, it's not great against Sivir when Sivirs come up. But um, when I first built this deck, the day I built this deck, I was playing nothing but Viego decks and Lee Sin decks, and uh, Recall stopped both of those decks, and I was like, perfect, this is what I want, and um, as the format kind of figured itself out and it became less frequent to see those decks, I slightly fine-tuned, and that's how I ended up with a little bit more burn and a little bit less bounce, because I was running three and three of these initially. We're running three of Deep Meditation, because it's the best draw card in our deck. We actually have a uh, a fair number of spells in here, and a lot of them are cantrips, so it's pretty easy for us to do, like, something reactive and then go, well, we already played one spell this turn, let's draw a card, and then have the deep med um, on discount. Of course, we're playing our three of karma, and then we're playing scatter prod as a two of. Uh, this card's amazing because you get to pick if it draws you a slow, faster burst spell. Um, of note, the only slow spell in our deck is called shot, and uh, the parallel converges it shuffles in and then if Echo levels the Chrono Break. Uh, so if we've already played two Cold Shots and we haven't leveled Echo yet, then uh, or haven't played a leveled Echo yet, then we're guaranteed to draw the Parallel Convergence with where that will just win us a game with a Karma in play. <coughs> uh, these are just also another form of backup win condition because once they has, have a Lightened, they are a very big threat, actually, and uh, they have a big enough body that even if we have to slam them down on six and just kind of draw for a faster burst spell to refuel our hands, fast spells being most of our reactive and burst spells being mainly things that are going to give us card advantage, um, <clears throat> it gets a lot of work done, and... I very rarely have felt bad to have this in my hand, um, you know, unless you draw two of them on your opening hand and just can't get rid of them on Mulligan or whatever. Uh, but yeah, that's the deck. Like I said, it can um, it can still be fine tuned, kind of just based on where the format is at the time. If it seems like there's a lot more aggro, you're going to want more burn, probably a little bit less commitment to things like will, where you're not getting the actual tempo advantage. 
Um, but as the format currently lies, this is the deck. And like I said, it's been performing at like a 60% win rate. <clears throat> so I've been pretty happy with it. Uh, I have deemed the deck Karma's Cats because that is the theme. I almost forgot to add the, the record. Okay. <clears throat> and um, you can ignore the fact that my rate here is at a zero. Um, this isn't even me saying like I was performing at a high win rate outside of plat, like down in like gold and silvers. Uh, this is, I was playing at a high win rate, I would hit plat three or two, and then stop grinding with this deck and four around with a different deck, and throw away a bunch of ranking, and then I would be like, okay, I feel like winning again. I would go back to this deck, and I'd play some, and I would cl climb a little bit, and then I'd go back to experimenting and throw ranking, and I would do that over and over and over. I realized that I was not wearing my headset, and I don't think my sound for game is on. That's better. <clears throat> okay. This is probably a pretty aggressive list, so I don't think the homecoming is our best bet. I'm gonna keep it though, um, because something I forgot to, to, to mention is it also gives us recursive fallen felines and recursive concussive palms, which is one of the reasons that I like it as a two of. Um, I kind of went off on a tangent and lost my train of thought for part of it. Having a recall against Zoe will be pretty good too, because if we can get it down before she's able to level, but after they've committed an okay amount. There's that fine line with Zoe where you need to be like wait it out, but you need to wait it out just long enough that they haven't given her spell shield or um, can just burst down the rest of the stuff and succeed at what they're trying to do. Okay, the Nopify is probably going to be pretty good in this matchup. Okay, this is amazing. We already hit a parallel convergence, and because we can shuffle more copies in, we can actually just commit to playing it to generate a ton of advantage, because um, this cat, every time you parallel convergence it, is actually going to shuffle um, more copies of, it, uh, of the bomb in. And that's actually pretty insane. I do think we want to wait a little bit longer to commit it, though. Mm -hmm. We're going to value our life a little bit higher than the Zoe card advantage because they are playing Noxus. And I just, I don't want to ch take the chance on it. <laughs> <coughs> I think it was a good call. <laughs> okay. We're going to go and play the, the Parallel Convergence now. I wanted to have enough board presence for this to actually matter a little bit. But I think three units is... Okay, cool. We we got them to commit a card. And they committed to not the Fallen Feline. Which makes me pretty happy. Because that means I get an extra bomb against them that they could have stopped. Um, I miss. I guess my concern is if I swing with the Practical Perfectionist, they're just gonna trade with the four two, and it's gonna favor them a little bit too much. Oh, that was a really good top deck. I'm hoping they go for a spell shield on Zoe, and then I can react with the crystal. <coughs> Let me do time trick first, because if I find another crystal, it would be kind of nice. Okay, I'll just take another parallel. <laughs> Having a bunch of parallels is actually pretty disgusting, though. Let's actually deny the Zoe card here. Okay, so they're going to they're gonna boost their Zoe. That's fine. I don't think they're going to be able to play five spells before I stop it, which is pretty relevant. 
or not five spells, but five unique cards. They might spell shield her here, though. Okay, that's pretty good for us. Okay, especially given the fact we have two parallel convergences, I think what we need to do now is just play them and force pressure on them. Because they only have eight life. This is a big deal. By the way, the deck doesn't normally just go off a of parallel convergence this early. I just got pretty lucky. <clears throat> One of Nopify potentially coming in clutch here. If nothing else, eating an extra removal spell. Yeah, this is just kind of the, the example of a perfect storm where we hit exactly what we needed to to kind of go off. Yep, they had to. And now if um if they don't have another blocker to play, they just have to use their Zoe. Okay, cool. <clears throat> now we attack everywhere because they can't value trade with this. Or I guess they could, but they would have to give up Zoe to do so. Okay, I I I don't actually see them recovering from this, even giving themselves a board full of lifesteal is an unlikely answer to where that we're at. Okay, first things first, we're going to see if we can just draw a burn spell and win the game. Cool. And even if they have an answer to this, we have a homecoming and we're fine. <clears throat> nice, that was like the best case scenario for a deck ever. Like I said, the deck doesn't really pop off like that and it only plays more like a traditional karma deck where I actually have to grind it out a bit longer. Uh, I even expected that matchup to be a bit harder than... It just looked. Oh. Let me change where my sippy is so the cool art that my friend did work on is actually on display while I'm drinking. <laughs> okay. Going on to game number two. <clears throat> So far, so good. Funny enough is, uh, according to my deck tracker at least, which I don't always use, I play on my phone a lot, but at least while I'm using the deck trackers on my computers, according to my deck tracker, Echo is my favorite champion. Which is interesting, because I didn't think I put him in as many decks as I did. But I guess, I guess the thing is, a lot of time, I, I, I really like Fallen Feline, and a lot of the time, if I'm playing the Fallen Feline package, I just throw Echo in anyways. And I do it to enable the Fallen Feline, rather than because they use the same package. I just go, oh, well, more predicts for Fallen Feline. Okay, sold. <laughs> I honestly should just see about refining um, a zillion list again. Uh, we're just going to swing here. I want to have the gotcha available because three mana tends to be when they start developing um, in this deck. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I think I'm pretty happy killing an elusive unit, actually. <clears throat> elusive is notably one of the hardest things for us to deal with. If, a, if an elusive deck w was randomly uh, more popular on the ladder, it would be very difficult for our deck to answer without shuffling a bunch of extra removal in. <clears throat> okay, um, we probably want the Eye of the Dragon. The Scatter Pot's also tempting. I guess, so the thing is, is their list is actually probably more controlling less because that is a Thrash. We'll, we'll take the Scatter Pot, actually. Um, I don't mind having extra copies of Skyropod because it is an additional win condition. They've shown me they're playing at least a little bit elusive right now. And we'll trade there and we'll take the one. Okay. We're going to go ahead and throw down the Echo. Um... I won't be surprised if they actually have removal for this, but if it's cheap removal, we have Nopify, and if it's expensive removal, then I'm okay with them burning it on a uh, Echo. 
Um, yeah, I can't counter it, but if they're playing the box and they're doing it passing priority and giving me four damage, like, great, I'll take it. Yeah, see, I, I don't regret uh, the scatter pods, even though it's going to take a while for them to be able to block. Okay, we're definitely going to play the called shot first and then draw for a slow spell. And we'll have a 50-50 chance between drawing another called shot or a parallel convergence, and that's a pretty big deal. I do dislike that they just played a thrash, but I also can't protect these cats without committing a deep meditation and spells anyway. So there's no point to this round. You got it. <clears throat> I could um, develop Echo onto the board instead, but I think I'd rather get the scatter pod down as soon as possible. Okay, we we did fail our 50-50, unfortunately, but we have extra scatter pods. Ooh. And a Hexite Crystal is an amazing hit for us. We're going to go ahead and play another Echo here. Keep in mind, uh, as I was stating before, Echo is here to enable the cats, not the other way around. So it's okay if they have removal for this. Uh, I'm not going to play to level the Echo, because that is just playing to lose. <laughs> Okay, they just committed another box to Echo. I will take that every day of the week. That is so good for us. <clears throat> okay, we're going to go ahead and play our call shot here. And then we'll, we'll bank the last two spell mana. Okay, he still needs three units to die. Cool. It's possible they set this up uh, through more elusive units, or not elusive, uh, but through more ephemeral units. But um, if they get a setup in play, then instead of killing it in a trade, we'll just bounce it. Because I expect what's going to happen is, at least with the current board spate, he's going to swing, pull the cat. And then I can Hexite Crystal and make sure it dies before it levels. <clears throat> I will note, though, it is very tempting to sit on Hexite Crystal at this point. Because I almost have a leveled Karma. Actually, the more I think about it, the more I think I need to wait. Uh, I'm actually just going to commit a Deep Meditation here to help level the other one. Oh, and that's even better, because now if we... Um, if we'd prefer, we can do... Whew. Their board just got really scary. Okay. Um. We definitely need to wait for the Karma on the Hexite Crystal at this point, because the, the board just became terrifying. I'm considering blocking their, uh, their Scourge and then using the scatter pod to recall instead. But I think what I do here is instead of recalling the Thresh, I'll, I'll recall the Scourge. I could also just recall the Viego, but I think I need to keep their life low right now because I'm very close to killing them with Karma. I know I could sit on spell mana to protect karma, but I'd like to get more crystals into my deck. What I'm gonna do, um, since I can't protect her with more than Nopify anyway, is I'm gonna play Deep Meditation and hope that they commit to playing cards now. In case you didn't know, by the way, if you pass after you play a burst spell, it doesn't give your opponent the end turn button, it just gives them the pass option. <clears throat> okay. This is a hard decision here, because we really need to make sure that Karma survives. I don't think we win without Karma surviving. Um, but we have answers if they end up passing before they spend too much mana. 
to not lose next turn. So we're gonna we're gonna give them chances to spend more mana. I think it's pretty important here. Um I think I need to let that happen, actually. And then what I do is I attack here. Because it's ephemeral now anyway. And I know I could have played a parallel conversion and given myself an extra unit to attack with and stuff. Which may have even been correct. It may have been just correct to go for a parallel conversion to win here because I could have forced, forced a trade. But I'm really hoping I can get them to commit enough. You matter so little. Yeah, so like right now, they're putting Viego in dead range by doing this, which is a big deal if they do that. Okay, great. They they did the correct play, but they almost didn't. Yeah, I, and I'm not happy about giving them um, a level thresh. But I think I had to, to commit the level and just hope for the best. Okay, so he's... Okay, we're in a situation here where they have enough mana to, like, actually do things that kill Karma. But if I don't commit Karma, now that they have a level Thresh, I don't actually see a way out. I have, I have to try it. The problem is, um, <clears throat> yeah, I think I may have actually gone for the Parallel Convergence play, and I misplayed by not doing so. Wow, another Death's Mark. That is shitty. <clears throat> yeah, I think I may have misplayed this game, actually. And that's, that's one of the things I was referring to with the deck having a little bit steeper of a learning curve. Yes, you. Honestly, Deathmark is a pretty good tech in this deck. It has very consistent generation for ephemeral units. And these get big pretty fast. Okay, they have the deny. Um, yeah, they get it. I should have. I should. I should have committed to the parallel uh, convergence when I had my five six in play. It would have um, put more pressure on them. It would have let me draw another spell. It would have done a whole lot of other things. Um, I probably, if nothing else, because their life was low enough, I probably could have forced a trade on them that they didn't want to make at that point in the game. It still would have given them a level Thresh, though. I think part of the problem is I was trying to play around the Thresh leveling, and then they just outplayed me. Oops. Wrong side. I think that was a winnable game, though. I think I just, um, I made one too many mistakes. They were definitely playing, uh... An interesting variant of that list, though. That's the first one I've seen run the death mark, so I w didn't know to play around them until the first one came down, and by then it was a bit too late. Also, like, the fact they're running the box was unexpected, and um, I think that their uses on it against my deck weren't very good, but um, they got there, so who am I to criticize how they did it? <clears throat> Okay, this is probably the OTK variant of the deck. That's pretty much the only time you see this pair anymore is when they're playing the, the OTK cheese. And we'll go ahead and just get our call shot online. <coughs> By the way, another reason we're playing call shot at two rather than three is to help consistency with hitting the parallel convergences off of our, um, our scattered pod. Shadow Assassin has grown in popularity again because a lot of people are in Ionia and want the, uh, uh, an extra unit and a card draw. It actually um, almost made this list. It just could not be fit with how the deck was being played. Another case of adapt is uh, as, the 
as the format changes. Uh, we're going to pass here because there's no reason to commit an echo when I can't even get a predict off of him. Okay. Uh, it's unlikely they can... I, I mean, Noxus does have some burn. Mm. I'm going to commit the echo anyway. This list rarely plays burn spells, to uh, the best of my knowledge, especially a two-mana spell, so I think it's fine to commit him to the board. And um, I'm fine with my cat trading with either of these units, so I'll attack with the cat as well. <clears throat> Do they already knew this cat would function as a jump blocker against one of them? Uh-huh. Now we'll just pass. <clears throat> we'll see if they pre-commit buffs to Draven. Okay, they didn't. Um, we're going to use the stun first. It gives us a blocker for later. And um, more importantly, if they start pulling the, like, oh, I'm unkillable crap, and we have the mana up for will, then we can just make them lose their unkillable buffed unit for the turn. Uh, we'll let that resolve. They didn't play an axe or anything too, so... Not that I could have stopped it at the burst speed, but... <clears throat> I will not lie, this second call shot is tempting because it increases the odds of the echo pod hitting. In fact, yeah, specifically because I have Echo Pod in hand, I'm going to go ahead and play Echo's Called Shot because it's going to give me a, a two and three chance of hitting the parallel convergence instead of the last Called Shot. I'm cold, I'm hungry, there's ropes <laughs> Slow spell. Of course we hit the last Called Shot. That's life. Thank you. There's extra, so... They're probably going to play around me having Parallel Convergence now, though, uh, which is fantastic for us. Um, I don't want to attack here because I don't have a response for if they make Draven unkillable, and they may just do it to block the Echo. Once again, I, I, I would commit my Echo if I could get the Predict off. Um, normally with this deck, I don't mind committing the Echo, but because I can't guarantee that Predict, I'm not going to. Okay. Time for the money makers. So what we're going to do here, we're going to commit this to blocking and then we're going to will that way, if they have their uh, syncopate again, we at least get to kill their elusive unit. And then we'll go ahead and drop an eye of the dragon. Okay. I don't want to drop the called shot yet because they currently think I might have a parallel convergence in hand and that false information is valuable to me but I want to get another spell off so I get my dragon Oh, and we hit a deep med meditation, which is very, very good for us. Parallel? Yes, perfect. By the way, the other reason we're playing deep meditations is sometimes you just get parallel convergence off of it. They probably have a counter, um, I, if they're playing them at least. <laughs> okay, great. They're not playing them. This is actually insane for us. We just got half of the mana we spent on that back, which gives us enough for a deny. But this is also a... Uh, a high enough threat that they actually have to do something about it, and this is this is why the deck functions pretty well. 
By the way, part of the reason I'm... Oh, they just took a loss. Okay, cool. By the way, part of the reason I'm playing um, kind of to protect Echo, even though I told you he's not needed to win, is your opponents don't know that. And if you're playing cautiously with Echo and they think Echo's important to you, they're going to put more stock in... Uh, or they're going to put more value in his stock and um, try to do things about him. And really, one of his most important functions is that he eats removal and then you play Karma. Especially if he eats removal on like 8 or 9 mana, you play a Karma and get her leveled. He even kind of serves as a second deny. Because sometimes what happens is on turn 9, I don't have a deny. But I have Karma in hand and Echo in hand. I can commit Echo to the board, and then they play the removal because they don't want to deal with Echo. And then I play Karma, and they can't do anything about her. And then when she's leveled and I have mana, it's really, really hard to stop her, even if I'm just drawing with her. Please excuse my eating. I um, had my Masubi del delivered to me by my fiancé. I, um... I've had a little bit of a mess up sleeping schedule the past few days, and I only woke up about 30 minutes before my stream time, so I didn't have time to um, cook lunch or order lunch for us or anything before it was time to get going. Uh, we'll just bank the spell mana. There's really no reason to commit uh, the Eye of the Dragon right now. They're not threatening any damage on us. So anytime an opponent does this pass and play against this deck, you just take it. Take every pass they, want, they possibly offer you, because this deck wants to go into the late game and if they are making the decision to just not do anything you accept that decision every day of the week and thank them for their poor choices <laughs> we're gonna shuffle more denies um i know that they're probably playing quite a few burst speed spells with targon shruma but we do want to have that deny on hand um for their own counter spells that they may be using against us i don't think i actually need it like physically in hand yet i just was okay with more copies we'll take a mystic shot here and then we're gonna drop an eye of the dragon um which should be online now because we have played two spells oh wait oh i did that in the wrong order i should play mr dragon and then play the, my spell that was my mistake but we did still spend the excess spell mana so i don't i don't hate the choices i've made because i don't mind not having the eye in play yet oh that's actually a pretty cool unit to play with um with Tark, I considered trying this list, and I just never got around to building it. Um, we're going to pre-commit Concussive and just stop this from attacking this turn. We really don't want them to start generating Lucky Finds. I do think uh, this is one of the cards I reviewed quite well that I think it got um, overlooked and underrated in general. I think this card is actually insane. Do a called shot. <clears throat> this is also the most patiently I've ever seen a target player set things up. Which isn't incorrect. I'm just more making the observation that I'm surprised about it. Okay, they probably have means of protecting. Also, uh, these are both pretty dangerous unit, so the target is probably not that important to them, in all honesty. Um, I'm gonna commit this now before he it has tough, that way they at least have to play a spell if they want to stop it, and if they play it during my turn, they don't get to use Jarvan's effect during theirs. Okay. And now we gained information, because we know that they're playing, um, they're playing Shapestone. We're going to go ahead and actually swing with these two, because anything that blocks these will later die to a Hexite Crystal. I'm, I'm aware that this has Spell Shield and won't just die to a Hexite Crystal later. I, I'm giving them the Lucky Find as a essentially a tax for doing this, but the trade-off is that um, they will later lose this unit and the Lucky Find he would be getting. Now, if they hit a good enough effect off the Lucky Find, it's possible I'm punished here. Okay, Fearsome is not 
one of the things I was worried about, though. Ooh, hitting the karma made this a little bit more awkward for me. Oh, crap. Well, I mean, between them... You cannot win. I'm not going to block the Taric yet. I, I think three damage is fine to take. But yeah, between them actually keeping their, their bruiser online and um, and my drawing of karma, I think I just need to wait. Hmm. Wonder how much this is worth. Because the Hexite Crystal can just save me, but I need to get there. As much as I like to save deep meditations for once karma has been leveled, I think it's super important here that I just get my hand full and get this dragon in play and keep my life total healthy. Okay. They're, they're doing this smart because they're committing to the bruiser to keep it alive. So that's my bad for doing the health trade and giving it the, yeah, the giving it the ability to do something early. Okay, we got another crystal though. Like... Getting a leveled karma down is actually insane for us. We just have to make it that far. Uh, I will definitely take more copies of karma. As much as I want to keep this parallel convergence to, um... To threaten them with karma because karma plus parallel convergence just win me the game. I'm questioning if I'm able to. Okay, I'm positive that I need to not keep that karma on top right now because I need to play more spells and make sure I have a dragon lane next turn. It's super important for me. The amount of damage they're threatening is quite high. I will also point out it's possible that not playing my Hexite Crystals now was incorrect, but if they had any buffs to protect these units, then the commitment wouldn't have been too large. Breathe in, breathe out. I am not surprised that they are that they're doing that. I'm happy. I'm happy that they um, don't have more than one Overwhelm unit, though. That's going to be a huge difference for us. Yeah. They do have a lot of Spell Shield, though, which is a problem, obviously. Oh, interesting. They're going to give that the Indestructible instead. Or the Spell Shield instead. I think they should have actually committed that there. Okay, so... It's possible that they still have an answer to that, and if they do, they do. Um, there won't be a lot we can do about it. We actually, unfortunately, do have to throw the Eye of the Dragon in front of this, I think. Because that loses us at four. Um, hold on. This is, this is actually a pretty difficult decision here, because if I play this wrong, it's going to cost me dramatically. Okay, actually, I think I know what I need to do, and it's different than how I was playing it. I'm going to do this. This will be dying. That will be getting returned to hand. I'm currently at 12. I commit this to blocking here in case they have a response, but they can't just give it another spell shield because of how this chains. So I think we're okay. The great thing is it doesn't matter. It doesn't take damage. The spell shield for them, uh, is still popped by the Hexite Crystal.
because they almost certainly have more buffs, but um, it's no nowhere near as threatening as this big ass attack. Yeah, that's fine. We take a little bit more damage than we were hoping, but we still have our uh, Eye of the Dragon. We have it online. We're just a bank spell mana here. Play a leveled karma as soon as we start our turn, basically. And there's hope. And I will actually be attacking with Eye of the Dragon before I try the Parallel Convergence because it's more important that I get more Karmas than that I get a little bit more life. That deck is very good at passing priority back um, because they can play burst spells and um, not burst, but the focus and focus spells and just be like, cool, I play a single jump. You go over and over and just kind of force you to make decisions. What's nice too is because Eye of the Dragon's the other thing I have out, uh, I am going to get mana back for playing this. I have deny mana still available to me, which is pretty important. Okay, unfortunate. That is very unfortunate, actually. We can still Hexite Crystal during their turn, but it means I need to commit to spells before they do as much as I would want them to do. I need to make sure I have extra blockers. I have to just commit to more spells here. Um, I think it's unlikely they have removal if they committed a Hush, though. Because they would have just removed her instead, and played Hush in response to me trying things if um, if they had it, or hushed her and then removed her, you know, something along those lines. The fact they didn't just remove her. Okay, we do get an extra blocker here. What's his wording? My sword ally and I can't take damage or die this round. Okay, so them being ephemeral actually won't kill them, which is kind of interesting. Unyielding. Hmm. Okay, I'm not positive that Hexacrystal alone will get me out. Two, four, six, seven. So we're going to go ahead and fill up our hand kind of know what our options are before we commit more. Okay. So our options are pretty much the same thing, which is a bit unfortunate. Okay. I am positive that I need to block their bigger units. Hmm. Yeah, the problem here is I don't actually think I can get the damage that I need. Your lesson begins. By force of will. Okay, so this right here is blocking five. This would be blocking six, actually. I could gain two more life. It's not enough. Yeah, I don't think I can get there. Um, hold on. This. Oh, that's not what I was thinking it was. They got there. I'm just going to click surrender. Sorry for wasting their time. That was me thinking really hard, not me trying to BM. Uh, they played that really well. They played that extremely well that hush was clutch for them though if they did not have that hush that that turn we were completely in the green for winning